more educational resources like our HMP notebooks, check out medicalbasics.com. So in this next video, I'm going to be talking about some of the best resources for studying for the neurology shelf as well as the rotation. And very similar to other videos, I'm going to be talking about just a very general overview, question banks, textbooks, and videos, as well as some resources that you can utilize on the rotation itself or also when you're studying. So the first thing is going to be the question bank. One thing that's a little bit different from other shelves that you're going to be taking throughout medical school is that there's really not that many questions within UWorld. And the one thing that's different is there's not a dedicated subject of neurology in UWorld. You have to really base it based off of the sub categories or the systems. So you can select kind of all the different aspects like medicine, surgery, ob pediatrics, and then within that you would select neurology or neuroscience. And so unfortunately there's not a dedicated section, which is why I can't necessarily say that UWorld is the absolute best resource for uh, question banks. I still think it's probably going to be your best bet, but the fact that it's not dedicated just for neurology makes me a little bit um, less confident in being able to say that that's the only resources that you can use. So definitely this is going to be one that you're going to want to be use, utilizing some other type of question bank. My personal favorite is going to be pretest. Um, they have it for other shelves as well. Um, but I think that for neurology, it's probably the best one. They make the best question bank from pretest in neurology. And it has about 500 questions. This is going to be USMLE style, but in other shelves, I would say that they're not as similar to the actual shelf exam. I would say for neurology, they definitely are. So they did a very good job of making these questions from pretest for neurology specifically. And I think they do a great job of creating questions that are going to be the same difficulty as well as testing you in the same format as step one, shelf, step two, those types of things. Um, it just has a different flair to it than, than other questions may have. They're not just testing you pure facts. They're actually making you think a lot harder and going that more of a two-step type thinking. Um, you can utilize some type of MBMEs as well as the American Academy of Neurology has a question bank. I would say those are lower yield for me than the pretest, uh, as well as you will for step two. So the next thing is going to be the textbooks. And I think that unlike other shelves where I have recommended that in general, I always prefer knowing a little bit less or, or having a book be less detailed, I should say, and giving more of a broad overview for cases and, and case-based learning. I think that neurology for me was one subject that I really wanted to know a little bit more. I wanted to know a little bit more detailed about the different aspects of neurology, just because it was something that was a little bit harder for me to grasp. And maybe you're like that. Maybe neurology is very simple for you and you may not benefit from a book like this. But I thought that Blueprints was a great textbook because it was a lot more detailed. It was a more detailed that I desired for in a show preparation, specifically for neurology. Case files was also a good one, just to walk through the general cases, have some good practical questions, especially while on the wards. But I thought that for preparing for the actual shelf, I thought Blueprints was going to be the best resource. Master of the Board, First Aid for Step 2, very good for your broad overview type textbooks. Next thing is very similar to other shelves is going to be the video lectures. Online Med Ed, great resource for giving you just some approaches to different type of neurological problems. Sketchy Medical and Picmonic. A little bit better, I would say, for this particular shelf and also the psychiatry shelf, just because there's a lot more pharmacology that's involved and it's often hard to kind of remember some of this pharmacology. So definitely used for this shelf as well as psychiatry. The next thing is going to be the different resources. So pocket medicine, time and time again, Again, it's something that you can definitely utilize. Scrub notes, good for just having different types of your neurological exam, different cranial nerves, different things that you need to remember that it's difficult for you to sometimes remember. I think one thing that you should definitely have in your back pocket is either a mocha uh, as well as some type of depression scale, like a Beck depression index uh, would be useful things to have in your back pocket. A clean copy if you have to be giving some type of, and for those that don't know, the MOCA is, is some type of cognitive exam. So if you have to be giving some type of cognitive exam to assess uh, whether a patient has dementia or not, this would be particularly useful. They're oftentimes going to be asking you, oh, can you give a, a MOCA on this patient? And if you have it in your back pocket, just shows that you're a little bit more prepared, but obviously know how to give one, uh, look up how you have to administer the test because it's pretty specific uh, as well as the BDI. Last but not least is going to be different websites on the wards. 
very common thread is going to be having up to date Hippocrates and Micromedics, up to date for just having your approaches for your medical diagnosis. Should no longer be using something like Wikipedia. And Hippocrates and Micromedics is going to be good for dosing and frequency of these medications. Um, although I would say in neurology, it's a little bit less so that you're going to be recommending specific medication. Well, I can't say you're not going to be able to, but um, a little bit less frequent um, than, say, something like medicines. But you should definitely have the dosing and frequency in your back pocket and always giving those recommendations if that's going to be in your assessment and plan. And the one thing that's a little bit different is you really should have a good physical exam. I think that you can get away in medicine with kind of I'll be honest, you can fake it quite a bit where you're really not having to rely on your physical exam as much as other things. I think that to be a great medical student, you should have a great physical exam in everything that you do. But I think that in neurology is one that even if you're a mediocre student, you still have to know your neurological exam very well because you're relying on that day in and day out. And your progress notes and your presentations that you've been giving are going to rely a lot more on your physical exam. So definitely have a good physical exam. So you can't just practice a physical exam because if you're practicing the wrong thing, then it's no point. So definitely this is one where I'll, I'll probably never recommend actually going to Bates and either reading Bates or, or watching these videos for Bates for any other rotation. But I think that for the neurological exam, it's one that you probably should at least do it once uh, right before you start the rotation to have a good neurological exam so that you're doing it correctly and, and because it's something that you will rely on uh, for a while. But if you have any other resources that you have either heard about or have utilized, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, but these were some that I thought would be particularly helpful. Be sure to check out our website, medicalbasics.com, for more educational resources like our medical ID cards. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.